Mr. Obama, health care is a human right. We've heard that and we know that. We know that and you need to know that too. Mr. Daschle, you need to understand health care is a human right. Paying for health care should be no different than paying for policemen or firemen or schools or libraries or roads or any of the other things that we all need. We should expect our government to pay for health security just like we expect our government to pay for national security. The security of our citizens' health is no less important than the security of our borders. And universal health care is no less important than nationwide coast-to-coast -coast highways. Now, some people say that single-payer health care is not even on the table in the coming discussion of health care reform. Let's be clear. Single-payer health care should be at the center of the table. It's not. It's not just affordable health care for all. Bush did that when he gave subsidies to insurance companies to cover Medicare patients. Bush did that. It's not just affordable health care for all. It's not employer-based health care. It's single-payer health care. That is the only affordable plan, and it should be at the center of the table. The system cannot be fixed with the for-profit insurance companies and the employer-based health care system that we have. We have to lead, we have to lead President Obama and Mr. Daschle and show them that there is one way to fix health care in this company, country, one simple way, single-payer health care. Now, almost half a century ago, a great man, not far from here, a great man shared his dream with us. He inspired us to work harder, to march longer, to speak louder in the struggle that led us to today. The Reverend Dr. King inspired us with his dream of a beautiful mountaintop of liberty and equality and human dignity. We've climbed a long way. We can glimpse the mountaintop through the clouds. We are near the summit, but we're not there yet. And Dr. King is looking down on us today and he's saying, you have not brought everyone with you. You have left 50 million of your brothers and sisters behind you, cowering in the valley of the shadow of death. We have left 50 million of our brothers and sisters behind us in the, in the valley of the shadow of death. We have forgotten the cruel equation America's broken health care system has. Lost jobs equals lost health insurance equals lost health equals lost life. We've left behind the father working at a dead-end job just so he can keep health insurance for his family. We've left behind the family making too much money to qualify for CHIP, but not enough money to buy health insurance. We've left behind the mother unable to afford her child's asthma medicine. We've left behind the senior who can't afford to eat and buy her medicines in the same month. We've left behind the businessman who can find no giant insurer that will insure his small group of employees. We've left behind the auto worker whose company can't afford to build the cost of health insurance into each car. We've left behind the family like my family, hanging on the brink of being without any insurance at any price because of pre-existing conditions. We have forgotten that the promise of the Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness starts with life. We've tolerated the inhumane, the cruel, the shocking injustice in health care that Dr. King warned us about. We've allowed hundreds of health, of profit-driven health insurance companies to slurp greedily from the river of money that flows in this nation's broken health care system. We have encouraged these companies to increase their profits by denying care to people when they need it. We've allowed these companies to break the back of doctors and nurses with rules with utilization reviews, with pre-authorizations and denials of treatments and exclusions from preferred lists. Today, we spend one-third of every health care dollar just to keep insurance companies in the middle of this river of money. They are the money changers in the temple of medicine. No insurance company carries a stethoscope. No insurance company wields a scalpel or bandages a wound. The insurance company is purely and simply a money changer, a gatekeeper, and too often a roadblock between us and our doctors and nurses. We cling to this broken system because we're afraid to demand something better, fairer, smarter, 
It may be because we're embarrassed when the clerk asks for an insurance card that we don't have. Lost jobs equals lost health insurance equals lost health equals lost life. That's that cruel equation. Some people say that single-payer health care is too radical for Americans. Some people say that Medicare for all is not politically feasible in these economic times. Some people say that national health insurance is not on the table for now, but maybe later. Some people say there are too many powerful and wealthy insurance companies, 1,200 of them or more, opposing national health insurance. I understand what these people are saying. Dr. King understood it too when he said, we have come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. This is no time to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy. If we believed the gradual argument, we would never have worked so hard to make real the dream that brought us here today. If we believed the idea that we're not ready, we would never have elected a president who his opponents said wasn't ready, who was inexperienced. And remember, he told us, believe in your ability to bring about change. He reminded us the promise of change over the power of the status quo. Every American, whatever income, employed, unemployed, self-employed, deserves the good health care that our doctors and nurses know how to provide. That is the dream. Dr. King was a great man with a great dream, but not only a dream. He had a dream and a plan. He dreamt the top of the mountain and he had a plan to get there. There is a plan for national health insurance in this Congress. Congressman John Conyers will reintroduce for the third time his bill, H.R. 676, Expanded Medicare for All. That give, bill gives all Americans the right to good and comprehensive health care. It covers all Americans, rich and poor, employed, unemployed, and self-employed. It allows each of us to choose the medical caregiver we want. It allows our doctors and nurses to freely practice medicine in the way they know best. Dr. King said we cannot walk alone, and as we walk, we must make the pledge that we shall always march ahead. The dream of good health care for all Americans without regard to employer or income or neighborhood, that dream means we must join hands, we must raise our voices, we must lead our leaders, we must march ahead. We cannot accept the false premise that we the people are powerless. I say to the gradualists and to the powerful and to all who would say we cannot have single-payer health care, I reply with our new president's words, yes, we can. That is America's creed. Can we afford to provide good health care for every American? Yes, we can. Can we drive the money changers from the temple of medicine? Yes, we can. Can we free ourselves from the tyranny of state legislators who cut Medicaid to build parking garages? Yes, we can. Can we free people from worrying about paying the hospital bill? Yes, we can. Can we free doctors and nurses to give the best care they know how without answering to insurance companies for what they do? Yes, we can. Can we free employers to run a business, not a miniature health insurer? Yes, we can. Can we free ourselves from the cruel equation? Yes, we can. Look at your neighbors. Look to the right and the left and front and behind. Some of your neighbors are among the 50 million that we've left behind in the valley of the shadow of death. Among the 50 million uninsured. Some of your neighbors are among the people we have left behind. The father tied to his dead-end job is walking through that valley of death. He's in bondage to our broken health care system. The mother who cannot afford asthma medicine, she's in bondage. The senior citizen who can't afford to eat and buy her medicines in the same month, she is in bondage. The family with pre-existing conditions, and whose family isn't that family? Unable to get comprehensive health insurance at any price, they are in bondage to this broken health care system. Our nation and each of us, with or without insurance, with or without employment, is in bondage to this broken health care system. Dr. King ended his speech with words that have echoed powerfully ever since. We will fulfill another part of his dream when we have single-payer national health insurance, when we have Medicare for all, when we can truly begin to look to the day when we are all free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, free at last. Thank you.